In the South Bay, we're getting a sneak peek of the results of a large pilot program involving security cameras. Hundreds of them blanketing a huge swath of South San Jose. Kit Doe joins us from a town hall meeting that's about to begin this evening. Kit? Yeah, we're live here at the Los Paseos Clubhouse, live in uh, San Jose, awaiting on the arrival of some top brass from San Jose police and also the district attorney himself. The million-dollar question out here is, did all of these surveillance cameras help reduce crime? The neighbors say yes. What do you get when you take citizens fed up with crime, mix in some old-school neighborhood watch, and inject a good dose of Silicon Valley high-tech know-how? We often say we're a neighborhood watch on steroids. Issa Ashloni is the founder of Safer San Jose, a nonprofit that's been working for the past seven years to get the funding, approval, and installation of 300 security camera systems that were put in all for free. These are all the cameras that are in the neighborhood. From the cameras are in an area covering four square miles near 101 and 85. Each home got a commercial grade license plate reader and two state-of-the-art 4K cameras pointed towards the street. Anybody entering the area will see these signs everywhere. It's warning everybody that, hey, we got cameras, they're registered with San Jose police, and we're going to get you. Numerous crimes have now been captured on video, including this theft from a landscaping pickup truck. The license plate reader got the getaway car speeding away from the scene. And this yellow Mustang was captured spinning donuts on a residential street. And we've blurred it out here, but yes, the license plate reader worked like a charm here as well. How much of a difference does video evidence make? It makes a tremendous difference. San Jose police ran the numbers and found within the surveillance camera boundary, year over year, calls for service went down 11%. And proactive police events went down about 16 percent. Someone that's going to commit a burglary might look at a camera in a neighborhood or a neighborhood with many cameras and decide to go somewhere else or decide perhaps not to commit the crime at all. These cameras have helped us solve a lot of crimes that we would not have been able to solve otherwise. Would you go as far to say that the cameras are a direct uh, contributor to this reduction in criminal activity? I think that's really hard to say at this point, but I certainly think that when you have a community like this that organizes itself, you will see a reduction in crimes because of that kind of organization. And so we're about a year into this pilot program. It should last about five years. It'll be really interesting to see what happens to the crime stats over that time. Live in South San Jose, Kitto, KPIX5. The recall race heating up as two contenders make their case on Governor Newsom's home turf. The issues they want top of mind as voters cast their ballots. Taking a live look outside, do you feel it? Bay Area is about to crank up the temperatures, the areas that could hit triple digits. Well, just how bad is the drought? Take a look at this. The Bay Area Water Agency hoping these dire images will hammer home the need to conserve. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Cook. And I'm Ken Bassida. We start with the recall battle heating up days ahead of a special election. Two recall candidates in the Bay Area trying to hit Governor Newsom on two key issues. KPIX 5's Kenny Choi joins us live now from San Francisco. Kenny. Ken, 20 million of these mail-in ballots have been sent out to registered voters in the state of California. There are just 20 days before that recall election. And today, candidates stumping the Bay Area, as well as the Tenderloin, a far cry from Malibu, hometown of one of T reality TV's biggest stars. We need to enforce our laws. Every time Gubernatorial candidate Caitlyn Jenner went on a walk with us in the heart of the Tenderloin. Let me tell you, running for governor, I need some help. Her first campaign visit to San Francisco. So, stop handcuffing the police, you know, and restricting them, and let's handcuff the criminals, enforce our laws, and let's clean this place up. In Oakland, former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner making a stump speech about increasing funding for police. If we don't have a safe city, we don't have anything. If we don't have a safe state, we don't have anything. But recall supporters say the top reason to oust Newsom is the handling of COVID restrictions, followed by school closures and the governor's infamous maskless dinner party at the French Laundry restaurant. COVID-related issues accounting for 61% of why recallers want to change. Other issues like spending decisions and mishandling unemployment dollars making up the rest. Coming together ultimately is going to be the thing that helps to get these businesses up and running, helps get all of us back to where we want to be, you know. 
Rampant drug use, homeless forever camped out on sidewalks, and what she says is lawlessness on the streets are problems Jenner wants voters to remember, as well as the economy with the recall the clock world, winding down. In California, the Golden State, and when it comes to a pro-business environment, is number 50. We're last. At People's Barbershop in Polk Gulch, savvy voters see the political spin ramping up. Folks need to understand that some random bozo might be governor in a few weeks if they don't take the initiative to return their ballot and vote no. Well, some of the top candidates are on the debate stage in Sacramento tonight. Uh, and what about Caitlyn Jenner included? Ken, the Jenner campaign says that the candidate was invited to tonight's debate in Sacramento. They said that this recall is all about Governor Gavin Newsom, and if the governor is not going to participate in the debate tonight, the Jenner campaign didn't want to be a part of this as well, so they decided to decline. Kenny Choi reporting live from the city. Thank you, Kenny. In Oakland, political and labor leaders gathered in an effort to encourage people to keep Governor Newsom in office. They're urging Democrats to vote no in the upcoming recall. Those at today's rally say the recall is bad for working families. They call it a Republican-led attempt to destroy voting rights, tear down the state's equitable housing policies, and more. They do not want the candidate currently likely to replace Newsom at the helm of the state. He wants to take us back to the 1950s. Is this the person that should govern the most diverse, inclusive, progressive, innovative state in the United States of America? Vice President Kamala Harris will swing through the Bay Area on Friday to campaign for Governor Newsom and rally Democrats to vote against the recall. Remember, KPIX 5 has you covered as we head into the election. We have a full guide on our website, kpix.com slash recall, and continuing coverage on CBSN Bay Area. Looking live at the scene of a fatal crash in Oakley, a 12-year-old boy was killed in this collision between a freight train and several cars, and a 19-year-old woman was also critically injured. The tragic crash happened today just before 1 p.m. at the intersection of East Cypress Road and Main Street in the town of Oakley. Both victims were traveling in the same vehicle. Three other people were treated at the scene. The boy's name has not been released, but it's believed he is a student at a nearby Delta Vista Middle School. The train went through and then all of a sudden I just heard a big crunch and then I looked over and the car flew off the road and then a tires were going and, this, and then debris was hitting my truck and I called 911. Yeah, this is the third train crash in eastern Contra Costa County this year and the second in just a week. On the fire watch, thick smoke choking the Tahoe area again today. Skies are a sick kind of brownish orange color. Blame winds carrying smoke and ash from the Caldor fire for all this. As crews struggle to make progress against the fire, it's getting even tougher for families forced out of their homes. As Marissa Perlman tells us, now there's trouble at some of the fire shelters. By 10 tomorrow morning, the dozens of campers here are going to be asked to leave. That's because animals can stay and humans cannot. These evacuees say they're frustrated, not because of where they'll be staying, but who they'll be leaving. This is the letter we have. Ralph Lyman, an Omo Ranch evacuee, got this letter yesterday, saying he and his wife Patty will need to pack up their two dogs and their tent and move on. Other larger animals can stay. Day. They told us we had two days to leave. By 10 o'clock Thursday, we were going to be evicted. Drone 13 shows the fairgrounds where evacuees, many from El Dorado County, have formed a community over the past week, parking RVs and trucks here. The space is housing 500 evacuated animals from all over, including dozens of horses and chickens who are allowed to stay. Evacuees we spoke with say they don't want to leave their animals or these people behind. We're becoming a family, and they want to break Break us up. The fairgrounds is the main evacuation center for both people and animals in Amador County. But unknown to the county and the Office of Emergency Services, the fairgrounds staff allowed people from El Dorado here to move in animals and then let their owners stay.
day two. The sheriff's office says that's not allowed because the fairgrounds is not set up as an official shelter space. It's not equipped to house people. One of the issues is dry camping. The fairgrounds doesn't have water, power, or sewer. It takes an army of people to efficiently and properly run a shelter. Two official shelters in El Dorado County have plenty of space. Evacuees, though, say they don't want to give up this sense of community they formed here. We're going to stay here until they make us leave. We'll take a live look outside right now. After an unseasonably cool week, temperatures are about to heat up a bit. Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan is in the Weather Center with the Bay Area warm-up on the way. Paul. Yeah, depends on where you are, how much temperatures are going to warm up. Around the Bay, it'll be noticeable, but still pretty comfortable. Farther inland, temperatures are going to start warming up tomorrow into the low 90s for the warmest spots. We're talking mainly inland parts of the East Bay, but then into the upper 90s for those locations by Friday and Saturday. So it's been a while since our temperatures have been that hot. So you want to exercise caution, especially as we head into the weekend. But this isn't going to be a real long stretch of hot weather. Temperatures are going to start backing down as we head into early next week. Unfortunately, the improvements we had in air quality aren't going to last much longer. The winds that are going to help direct the warmer air mass towards us are all going to also going to send some smoke towards us. But for right now, we're in the good to moderate category, just barely into the moderate category for our current air quality. We'll track that surface level smoke and when it's going to move in coming up in the full forecast, Ken. All right, thank you, Paul. Turning to our drought emergency tonight, Santa Clara Valley Water District is sounding the alarm and urging its customers to start saving water now. And you can see why from these reservoir images from SkyDrone 5. KPIX 5's Devin Feely shows us just how bad the situation has become. The water district is trying to drive home the message that not only is the drought serious, but the water situation locally is dire as well. And there's an urgent need right now to begin conserving water. The district released side by side comparisons of levels at its 10 reservoirs, comparing 2017, a wet year, to current conditions. The drought has cut deeply into water reserves. Stevens Creek and Guadalupe reservoirs are now at 14% of capacity. Uvas is at 18 and dropping fast. The situation has been the most dire we've seen in our county probably ever. Conditions at the county's second largest reservoir, Lexington and the Santa Cruz Mountains, are better, but not by much. Lexington is over three quarters empty at just 23% of its total capacity. This is sad. I mean, I bet you we're going to go on a two or three year drought. The longer the drought goes on, the greater the need to conserve. The water district has ordered 15% cuts, but so far customers haven't really saved at all. 0% in June compared to 2019. We did have some bad months where the message hasn't gotten the folks that the situation is grim and could go to dire early next year. Above ground storage and reservoirs admittedly only tells part of the story. The district also stores water in deep underground aquifers, which could be threatened if the drought extends into next year. And that's why they say it's important for people to start making small changes and saving now. When I take a shower, I'll take a bucket and run the water so that the water collects in the bucket. And when it starts to get warm, I'll take the bucket and throw the water into the laundry. The emphasis for the water district has been on education and encouraging people to conserve. They say that they will shift to fines if they can't get those conservation numbers up. At Lexington Reservoir, Jeff and Feely, KPIX 5. And still ahead on KPIX 5 and CBSN Bay Area, a Bay Area housing fight centered around enrollment at a Bay Area university. Why neighbors say incoming students are displacing longtime tenants. Taking a live look at the Chase Center when Warriors fans can get their hands on preseason tickets. Hint, you might want to set your alarm now. And a little piece of rock music history in our own backyard, the new honor for this Bay Area home and the hit created behind its walls. The leading expert in residential remodel is giving 30% off its famous signature line cabinets. Call now or go to AmericanKitchenCompany.com and get your free gold standard bid. Unlock a summer of possibilities in a new Chevy. Expand your options and your perspective. Find new summer adventures. Find new roads. 
Make no monthly payments for 120 days on all Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, get 2.49% financing for 72 months. And get 32.50 total value on this Silverado All-Star Z71. To reduce the risk of wildfires, PG&E may proactively turn off power when severe weather is forecast. Here are four ways to prepare before a power shutoff. Update your contact information at pge.com slash mywildfirealerts so we can reach you. Plan for medical needs like medications that need to be refrigerated or devices that require power. Pack or restock your emergency supply kit. Ensure backup power sources are safe to operate. To learn more, visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com. At Safe Light Auto Glass, we're committed to taking care of you and your car. Whether you're by the Golden Gate Bridge or here at Coy Tower, whenever you need us, we'll come right to you. Send a text when we're on our way, and you can track us and see exactly when we'll be there. With no contact service, you can trust. So when you have auto glass damage in the Bay Area, stay safe with Safe Light. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. Don't wait months for your new furniture. Get it now at the Living Spaces Labor Day event. Make your living room more inviting with a variety of sofas for less. Enjoy entertaining with dining sets for every budget. And rest easy with queen beds at $195. Plus, get special financing for 60 months on select purchases with your good credit. Best of all, get free shipping on your entire purchase as soon as tomorrow. Don't miss the Living Spaces Labor Day event. Living Spaces. The leading expert in residential remodel is giving 30% off its famous signature line cabinets. Call now or go to AmericanKitchenCompany.com and get your free gold standard bid. Chopper 5 flying over UC Berkeley on the first day of classes today. The university has grown substantially over the past 15 years. That's caused a severe housing shortage in the surrounding neighborhoods. And now, as KPIX5's John Ramos reports, a court is holding the university responsible for its enrollment decisions. UC Berkeley prides itself on being inclusive, but it turns out they may have been too inclusive over the last 10 years, and now a judge has put a ban on any enrollment increases for the university. It's the first day of school at UC Berkeley, and the walkways are jammed with people, and apparently so are the classrooms. My morning class today, it was packed. I walked in, seats were all full, people were on the floor, and I was like, dang, where am I going to sit? Between 2005 and 2020, the university added 11,000 students, a 30% increase, but added little, if any, new housing. The mad scramble for a room has turned former single-family neighborhoods into suburban dorms for the university, with landlords renting to up to 10 people in a house. Most of the students who live in this neighborhood are either from out of state or from wealthy families, and they have displaced lower income uh, tenants. Phil Bakavoy leads a group of homeowners who sued Cal over its enrollment increases, and on Monday, they won. A Superior Court judge ruled the school must conduct an environmental impact study and mitigate any negative effects of enrollment hikes. And we very strongly feel that the best mitigation measure is that the university, went, every time they add a student, they add a bed. The judge slapped an enrollment freeze on Cal and put a hold on a large development project planned at this parking lot on Hearst Avenue. But in a statement, the university said it no longer plans to grow faster than 1% per year, and it will take six to eight months to satisfy the development requirements. We are confident the court will ultimately permit us to proceed with the Upper Hearst project, the statement said. Meanwhile, there are plans to increase housing near the campus, including on the property of People's Park, which drew a protest on campus today. They say, oh, we need housing, but why do we need housing? Why don't we have enough advisors? It's because they are over enrolling. We are far past our carrying capacity. At UC Berkeley, John Ramos, KPIX 5. Let's take a live look at San Jose, where the police department there could be in a tough situation over the city's employee vaccine mandate. As of now, all city employees must show proof of vaccination or get tested weekly to stay on the job. The testing option will phase out, though, except for those with a valid religious or medical exemption. Now, the Police Officers Association is asking the city to keep both options in hopes of not losing more police officers. 
City officials say the new mandate is the best way to protect the public and staff from the spread of COVID. Taking a live look at Chase Center.